This is again where I would use those wash lights. I'd probably try and have a wash light kind of on this shrub. Um, I would probably try and have a wash light on not every one of these, but maybe on this one and maybe on this one. And then I might try and do another one or two over here. Again, you're creating that perimeter lighting, but at different levels and different intensities. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this short video with a couple great landscape lighting tips. But if you need more info, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or go to YouTube and search for Lighting Doctor for more helpful tips. Hey, Andrew, thanks for uh, sending in the pictures and for your email. Um, yeah, happy to give you some direction here. I think you're you're more than likely going to be looking at like a custom kit where we can kind of help uh, put together the different pieces for you um, because just you have some some nice features that I think it would be worth um, just using maybe some non-standard stuff uh, in a lot of those kits uh, just to really highlight things well but um, for example like any trees like this that you know are I would say under 20 feet high really you can just get away with like a standard accent light like this guy um, it has a 20 watt equivalent lamp which is about a 4 watt LED lamp in there um, and then for some of the other areas you're going to want to use a slightly brighter which is like a 35 watt equivalent so it's just a little bit brighter um, to get light to those top peaks but what I would do on a tree like this is I, I would just get one simple accent light kind of at the base right around here that's shining pretty straight up so you're catching a lot of the trunk and branching structures and then some of the foliage as well um, on the my real other focus would be on the house. I mean, you've got some beautiful brickwork, some beautiful stonework, and I think it would be a shame if you didn't highlight some of that. So what I would probably do with that is I would use that same light that I talked about, but that's where um, most of the places in your house, I would upgrade that to the 35 watt equivalent. It also has a slightly narrower beam angle. The reason that's good is because now, what I would do is I would have that fairly close to the house. You're maybe 12 to 18 inches back from the actual brick and I'm hoping that there's enough room behind these shrubs to do that if not um, something else you can do is you can always put the light on a riser so that you can get it kind of right here so that you're still getting that effect from here um, you just have to you just have to add the risers which is easy to do you can even just go to Home Depot get a piece of uh, a piece of threaded half inch pipe and all the fixtures have a half inch thread on the bottom of them so as long as you have something that you can screw that half inch thread into from the fixture and then on the other end you have something that you can uh, screw into a half inch ground stake uh, then you can do that but if you have room behind those then you don't have to worry about that you don't need a lot you only need maybe 12 inches or so to be able to get that light but the way I would do that is I would try and have uh, two of those uh, lighter intensity lights on both sides of the windows here, kind of underneath the shutters, shining up so that it's really uh, highlighting this area. I would do the same over here on both sides of the window so that you're really pushing that light to the top. And I would use that same light um, on the corners here. And even though this one is kind of behind this, this bush, it's, it's going to have that nice balance and I'll talk to you about some things in the front you can do as well but I would have them on both corners and then I would also have them kind of in between uh, the two window cells and, and that's going to give you the effect you see a lot of those really nice houses that are uh, lit with landscape lighting they really spend a lot of time focusing on um, on really on the front of the house here uh, and then the other thing I would do and I'm just trying to see uh, if it's possible I can't quite see uh, here we go uh, so I see you have the gutter here. What you could do, and what I probably would do, is I would probably try and mount another one of those accent lights. Um, it can just be the standard 20 watt equivalent one, uh, actually in the gutter here, and have that kind of shining this way so that you're catching this whole second uh, story here as well as this peak. It's really simple to do because you can actually just drop the wire right down in the actual east trough and gutter, uh, run it in here, all the connections are waterproof, and then we have these gutter mounts um, that you can use to mount it. Uh, but these gutter mounts here actually fit right into the gutter and then you can screw your light into there and I would use that to highlight this uh, second story peak. So uh, in summary for that front of the house I'd be looking at those 35 watt equivalent lamps. I'd have one, two, three, four, and then four more over here so I would have eight uh, and then I would have just a standard one up here, so nine. And then it all depends. I mean, I love lighting these pillars in the entryway. If there's any way behind these bushes to get one of those accent lights that highlights up these pillars, um, I would definitely do that as well. That one you can just use a standard uh, 20 watt equivalent or 4 watt LED lamp. Uh, the nice thing is the 
the light hits this top section and it kind of spreads so it almost lights this entire archway uh, and makes the home really inviting so if you have room to get a light behind there i would definitely try and do that as well even if you have to um, trim some of the bushes back or something uh, to get that light that would probably be uh, an area i would really really focus on and then for the front level, um, it's really up to you. I'm a big fan of lighting the back, but you will have a bit of a dark spot here. So a light that I like to use in those cases um, is a wash light, especially on any of those lower line shrubs and stuff. A wash light is very similar to an accent light. The difference is it's not as bright, not as intense, uh, wider angle, and that's why I would use it in areas like this. So for example, if you have this and this kind of lit in the back, then I might look at throwing one of those wash lights kind of in here and maybe another one over here. And then this tree is going to be tricky um, to light unless you've got a lot of room here to put like an accent light that you can kind of shine at the tree just because it's, it's growing away um, from the light. So it's one I think if you can more focus on two or three wash lights down below here in between where you have the accent lights. Um, so say, for example, on the windows, on the three windows, but highlighting the bushes, I think it would be a real nice balance of up light and then some down light. And then if you can get an accent light somewhere over here on this tree, um, you can do that. Or I think it would be fine to leave it out because sometimes it's okay just to have things backlit and then you have kind of the silhouette of the plant in front of it. So, uh, and same thing over here, I'd probably try and get one of those wash lights in here. Um, and then for the front here, I mean, same thing, you're going to have some darker spots. So I might try one of those wash lights in front here, try and get one in front over here and try and get like another one over here. Really, again, just so you that creating that balance of some higher uh, level light up here and then some lower line stuff here and really eliminating some of these dark spots. Um, the other thing you could do, I mean, a lot of people will use path lights um, along areas like that. I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of using a ton of path lights. I just think you get more bang for your buck out of out of wash lights um, and it's easier to hide the fixture than with a with a path light. So I would probably try and stick to the wash light in the front. Um, and then now seeing this picture, I would definitely leave this guy out and I would really highlight this tree. I would use just two of those standard 20 watt equivalent accent lights and I would probably try and light it kind of from this side over here and this side over here just because it's such a big tree you have so many branches structures and such a wide canopy that if you try and do it with one light i think you're going to miss out on some things but if you try and get it from two angles you're and have those shining um you know have it probably around here and shining more straight up because you're still going to get a lot of that branching as well as it's going to catch more of the canopy by doing that um and i wouldn't put much else in this area um, because i really think that's going to be the the feature that you want to highlight um and then definitely you can get some lights over here. The uh, the thing you're, you know, with a project of this size, you're probably going to look at two separate transformers. I would probably try and look at a transformer uh, to do a lot of this front area. And then you might have one in the back uh, and run those wires over here because I'm not sure if you have any sleeving or anything under the driver where you can get wire over here. But this is again where I would just use one of those standard 35 or um, 20 watt equivalent up lights on this tree. I would probably throw one. Um, one of the 35 watt equivalent ones on this back tree and then I would probably try and do the same over to like this taller one uh, and really you're not trying to light every tree but even if there's some back here that you wanted to it's really as you're just kind of trying to create like a little bit of a perimeter of light so maybe four to five of the um, taller 35 watt equivalent lights back here so that as you're looking the driveway you really notice the perimeter of the property and then the one up front here um, and then around the back, I mean, there's so many, I mean, there's so many things you could do. Um, you've got uh, all this fence and stuff here. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I mean, if you are planting some trees like this, this is where I would try and accent again, like maybe three or four of those if you're planting some of those. And a lot of times we'll, we'll plant trees, even if they're smaller ones, uh, really because I just want to create that perimeter lighting so that as I'm looking out in these areas, it's not just this big dark spot and I can really see where my property ends uh, it also makes the whole property look bigger so i would definitely do that on any of the smaller uh, trees or shrubs that maybe you have here this is where i would maybe put a wash light but i think i would really focus the accent lights on the exterior on some of the taller trees and i just i, I can't really tell um, i know you have one here and i'm not too sure if there's other ones here but if you had kind of like some stuff over here that you could accent to border that perimeter would be really good um, 
I like the uh, same thing like this, a tree like this, I would definitely get an accent light on and try and highlight that. Um, and then any other ones that you have here, again, just to set up that perimeter on these kind of pergola areas, there's two examples, there's two ideas that you can do. One takes a little bit more work, uh, one's a little easier. I think they both look great. One option is to have those accent lights, just those standard 20 watt equivalent ones kind of on the base. So it shines up the post and then that light kind of hits the top and it almost makes like a lit archway. Uh, the other way of doing it is with um, some hanging lights like this, where you kind of have them hanging from the top of the pergola. The only reason you may not want to do that, I like the look, if you had them kind of hanging over here and hanging over here, is just that if you're lying here at night, then you have those shining right in your eye, whereas this really just highlights the feature. Um, and looking out from this area, it would be really cool to kind of have that area lit up. Um, I probably wouldn't put a whole lot in here. I mean, you definitely could, but if you do a good job with the perimeter lighting, I would focus more on the wall in front. Um, yeah, for sure, I would do that um, because you've got some cool uh, features and some cool viney things here. This is, again, where I would use those wash lights. I'd probably try and have a wash light kind of on this shrub. Um, I would probably try and have a wash light on not every one of these, but maybe on this one and maybe on this one. And then I might try and do another one or two over here. Again, you're creating that perimeter lighting, but at different levels and different intensities. So um, same thing back here. I mean, you've got this guy. I would light that. I would try and light that. I would try and um, if there was an, another one here, I'm not sure if that's on your property or not. I would probably try and light that. Again, you don't need to light every single thing, but if you just focus on a couple of the um, bigger aspects and the feature ones in the background, it creates that perimeter. And then you kind of have like an inner perimeter here um, where you're really featuring some kind of cool um, plants and and things that you have in here. So that's what I would do uh, in that area. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and I think that mainly covers it. You did send one more picture. Um, this guy here, I mean, oh, and I, I like this. I'm not too sure what uh, you've got going on here, but I mean, this is something else I, I might try and uh, highlight. Again, if you've got some perimeter lighting back here, even if you wanted to cheat a little bit um, and throw like a light up here that kind of catches some of these, you totally can too. We've done that in the past, um, but you don't have to if you've got something. But if you have something like this, I mean, this is where, again, I would try and use one or two wash lights to really highlight it. Um, I'm not sure if that's a sitting area back there or what, um, but I definitely like the idea of anytime you kind of have like a new unique feature like that, those wash lights are really good. And then um, the last thing that I will mention is if you wanted to do anything around here, I do like these um, planter pot ideas. And a lot of times what we'll do, you just have to be careful sometimes around the pool area um, because you don't want to be looking up into that light. But sometimes... If these were moved back a little bit, we'll actually run wire uh, just up the side. And usually you don't see it through the drainage hole at the bottom and then put like a path and garden light somewhere up here. So it kind of lights this these areas, this stair area a little bit. And as you're looking out from the house, um, it just gives a little bit light uh, to this area here. So that's, that's an idea for you. So, you know, if I uh, go back in summary, I mean, you've really got a great uh, property. You're going to have to decide how many lights is too many, but focus on the perimeter with some of the bigger trees because those are the ones that are going to give you more bang for your buck and really stand out any unique features like this I would try and get some lights on if they're under six feet use a wash light uh, same thing with shrubs and whatnot um, you know any of these taller trees go with that 35 watt equivalent highlight some of these trees with more than one light uh, really do a good job on the front of the house uh, with some accent lights uh, some wash lights for that lower level lighting and I think that pretty much covers it. I'd be happy to put together um, a kit for you. One thing I didn't mention is you may want to also, um, if you have those 35 watt equivalent lights on this side of the house, I think you would probably want to do the same um, along the side here. And all that's going to do is it's going to extend the viewing angle. So now you kind of have like a 360 degree viewing angle of your, of your house with light. Whereas if you weren't to put anything here, I think you would definitely find this would be a dark spot. It would look kind of out of place, but just by throwing maybe two of those lights kind of evenly spaced along the side here um, would just round out that uh, that lighting design. So again, I hope that gives you some good ideas. I know it's a lot, um, but please let me know if you have any questions and I'd be more than happy to customize a kit with those. Just let me know what you like, what you don't like. Um, and if you have different power sources where those might be, I think 
you'd probably want to use two separate transformers. The nice thing is with our uh, Wi-Fi plugs, you can still run those on the exact same app. You don't have to run out um, to two different transformers to turn lights on and off. So I look forward to hearing from you, Andrew, and thanks again for your email. This is kind of like our staple fixture that we use for a lot of our jobs, the RS um, Uplight. Uh, the reason I like it for so many reasons um, and why it works good for this is um, it comes with a really durable ground stake, which you don't always find with a lot of the lights and stuff you find on Amazon and Home Depot. It's a pretty cheap one and it breaks real easy. These stakes won't break. The light is uh, is going to get hit by a tractor, might get knocked out of the threads, but these will not break and you can usually just screw them back in. So I like that. I like to have a, a 10 foot lead wire. So this is great when we're mounting them in trees and stuff because um, it just it gives me a lot of room to play around if I come back at night and I want to move it I can move it you know within 10 feet either way and I don't have to remake connections so I, I love that um, the wire is really easy to work with cheaper models um, I know because sometimes we use different lights for different things it's just it's not as easy to work with all this stuff adds up which makes a, a quality light if something's really cheap there's generally a reason for that so um, the other reason I like it is if you've had a chance to work with it or have tried or try it before you buy it light you'll know um, this is an aluminum fixture but this does not feel like most aluminum fixtures that you find on Amazon and Home Depot um, get our try before you buy it light you can see how durable this thing is um, it's literally bulletproof I've been installing these in trees before and I've dropped these from 25 feet and this thing does not break um, so uh, a really good light and then the other reason I like it especially for a lot of do-it-yourselfers and I get flack from uh, from professional lighting designers all the time saying, oh, integrated, integrated, integrated is the way to go. I, personally, I still like this. I like getting a good quality fixture and I like getting a good quality bulb. Again, you get um, you get some of the cheaper stuff you find online and you're gonna have problems with the bulb. They just don't last as long. They draw more power than they say, so that's where people run into voltage drops. And I get that email, uh, I don't know how many times a week, hey, I bought this system, I won't say the name, uh, from a big box store and I hooked up all my lights I've got 20 lights and they just they won't come on and it's because um, the lights are drawing a lot more power than the box actually says and that's just based on efficiency and quality and all that kind of stuff and they can't get their system to go so I mean if you're doing a very small system that's fine but if you're getting upwards of 15 20 lights plus and you're still going with some of those cheaper models there's a good chance you're gonna have some problems um, not so much with this um, the other reason I like it is the components are really easy. I'll talk about some troubleshooting stuff uh, later that uh, really allows you to play around and troubleshoot with this. And the other thing I like too is on this property, so we've got some trees that are, I, I don't know, I'm looking at them here. I say they're 80 to 100 feet high. So I want to be able to put something in that's bright enough. And I like the ability that if I put something in and it's either too bright or not bright, enough I can just go and I can switch out a bulb I don't have to change the fixture I don't have to mess around with trying to change an LED board I can just basically pop in a new bulb um, try something a little bit brighter and see how that looks so um, that's one of the reasons I really really like these ones um, it just gives you a whole bunch of flexibility I know a lot of people ask about beam spreads and and intensities and all that kind of stuff well this really allows you to play around with that because even as your landscape grows as trees get bigger and stuff you might want to upgrade how bright some of your bulbs are um, really good option again uh, nice waterproof seal that's another thing that just makes fixtures last I mean there's so many reasons and you know we're on a on an island here that gets a lot of rain in the winter time so I want to make sure we got something that's super waterproof that's why we're using our waterproof connections and everything but um, really wanted to give you a feel for why we're using uh, these lights on this project and with so many they're by far our most popular one hey guys I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape and be sure if you want your own free consultation video just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.